Hi there, it's Corey and Denise with Does Size Matter and we're going to have another RV review for you today and this time uh, as per viewers requests we are doing the Winnebago mini series. Super excited to do this, um, the research was fun even. Uh, I guess what I want to point out is that on this series Winnebago's got a number of mini travel trailers that uh, all have the same construction. So this video is the construction techniques of the Winnebago Mini series. And I will go through some of the differences, but overall it's pretty much the same. So when you're looking for a specific mini model, I will do that in a separate video and I'll link to it at the end in one of the corners. This one's just gonna be specific to the construction. Also, you gotta remember, this is mine and Corey's research from all of the forums and everything we uh, look for and learn about and then bring to you to share. So you take that and use it however you like. Today, we're at Jubilee RV Center in Kamloops, British Columbia, Canada, and they got a whole raft of the minis here. So we're gonna show you as many as we can before it rains. I'm already freezing. <laughs> So let's get on with the construction of these trailers. And I'm, I'm just gonna read you some notes that I've got because there are a few different types of Winnebago mini travel trailers. The mini drop is uh, got a six foot five inches across the trailer, but it's on an eight foot tire stance. The micro mini, seven feet across, um, so it's smaller, lighter, but it also comes in a fifth wheel. The Mini is eight feet across and it's still lighter weight. And then there is the Mini Plus, which is also eight feet across, but it's bigger, a little heavier, a little more deluxe. So they've kind of just categorized them that way. The build construction techniques are the same with just a few slight differences. So we're going to show you the construction on this Mini. And then when we do the specific tour videos, I will point out if it's a Mini Plus or otherwise and remind you what the differences are. Okay, so let's get started on the construction techniques. When it comes to construction on the Winnebago Minis, we have to start talking about the chassis. The chassis is a bit different than a lot of the other reviews we've done, so I have been really researching a lot on it. It is a company called BAL and they're building this NXG chassis. It is a super strong steel, low alloy and light weight and it doesn't have an I-beam in it. It's precision cut on a CNC system and it has minimal welding. And I know people get panicky about that but I'll explain it more. The um, welding that is done on the chassis is done robotically so that it can be very consistent in the bead of the weld. Then they use what they call huck bolts to put it all together and a lot of people are concerned, wow, bolting instead of welding? But these are very specific bolts and they have been around for a long time, used in shipping and trains and things like that. They're permanent bolts and they're meant for high vibration situations. They're not the kind of bolt that you need to tighten. Once they're on, they're on and they're not moving. They don't loosen with the vibration. So that's why they are such a great choice and this particular manufacturer is using them and Winnebago is using that because it helps them have a strong, lightweight frame. Um, what else can I tell you? Oh, this whole frame is uh, e-coated. Now we've talked about e-coating before. Basically that's an electrically charged uh, system so that the rust protection is sucked onto the frame in all the little nooks and crannies. And anywhere that is visible, it's actually double coated. So uh, it sounds like a pretty good system to me, but it is the kind of system that you don't want to point load anything on the frame. So if you are needing to uh, lift this weight off of the chassis for maybe you need to change a spring or something where you need all of the weight off, 
you need to do that um, not with just a point jack. You would want to spread the weight out over a two by six and use areas not near windows and doors and slides and things. If you just need to change a tire or something, you just put the jack on the axle and change your tire as normal. Um, the other thing I want to mention is the wheel wells on the Winnebago Minis are made of metal, which is a significant thing that we probably wouldn't notice. And I want to just get Corey to show you that. It, you got to climb way under here. <laughs> but if you can see under here, that's metal. And the significant thing about that is a lot of trailers are plastic and that's not the end of the world except that if you have a tire blowout this is going to minimize the damage to your trailer far more than plastic plastic's going to break and stuff too where this this is going to help out a lot so hopefully you're not having a tire blowout but these things do happen sometimes the other point uh, winnebago is using aluminum wheels so they look good uh, let's talk about the tires so these are st tires st 205 75 R14. I'm just telling you that for the sake of giving you the information. I have no idea. I know, of course, that an ST tri tire is rated for a trailer, but as far as whether these are the ones you're going to want for the ride that you're looking for, uh, I suggest you go to a tire place and ask or you can always go to big truck big rv he seems to know everything about tires and trucks and trailers so uh me i'm not a tire expert these i know are adequate for this trailer but they may not be your personal choice next i want to talk about what's underneath the trailer and Corey's going to try and show you there's a fully enclosed underbelly and that's important and these are where the tanks and things are so here's where you hook up your sewer here's your black and gray valves and notice that they go into the underbelly and that's important to keep grime and water away and that they're also heated and um, they're also the underbelly tanks are ducted to keep them warm in uh, you know when it gets a little colder and you're out and about so I just want to show you all of that. So let's go take a look at the jacks that are on here. Um, there's front and rear. These particular ones are um, manual, but I have seen on others that they do have some electric uh, jacks. Uh, I was also in my research learning that the, black, the back ones are considered more stabilizers and the front ones are considered leveling jacks. So. I have some questions about that in the sense that that's like saying you can't level side to side on the back of your trailer. So it just seemed a bit odd when I heard that. Um, but obviously you can. They're separate. You can, whether you're doing them manually or electric, you can move them up and down and then get them level on whatever ground you're on. This particular one though is manual, but I think you can also get them in uh, automatic. The Winnebago Mini series is a fully aluminum structure. The front, the roof, and down the back are on 12 inch centers. Uh, they have a fiberglass insulation throughout all of that and 3 8 inch plywood and a one piece TPO roof. Um, TPO seems to be really standard so uh, I mean there are other choices and they add weight or there's pros and cons price all those things tpo is a pretty standard roof these days um, the other thing is through the aluminum that you can't see under this fiberglass cap as it comes down uh, the wiring and things are in there and just to tell you to assure you when they cut a hole in the aluminum and they pass wires through it they put an actual little plastic o-ring in there so that the wires as you're driving down the road are not scraping against the side of sharp aluminum which then would cut them and eventually you would have wire hitting aluminum which would be shorting things out so that seems like a common sense kind of thing that would happen but not all manufacturers do that uh, so Winnebago I just want to assure you does uh, this is the uh, mini and it does have a fiberglass cap on it uh, but not all of the mini series does just different levels different uh, options that come 
It does have a bit of a rock guard on it, so that's nice to have as well, you know, as things are getting kicked up. Um, this is where your propane tanks would go. And I believe it comes with, and I'll have to be sure, but I think it comes with two 20-pound uh, tanks and an electric jack. Next, let's talk about the walls because they are significant on the Winnebago Mini Series. Um, they are, again, all aluminum. The windows and doors are framed out. They have made with one and a half inch block foam and then they router that out and they put all of the framing into it. Um, geez, it's a bit windy out. <laughs> Inside the tubes of aluminum on the walls, they do put some wood in areas where anything is going to be screwed in, like a cabinet or something like that. They also put a metal plate. So you can be assured that the things that are screwed into the wall are actually not just screwed into a little piece of aluminum, but through a metal plate into an aluminum uh, frame, which has some wood behind it just to hold it in place. Um, also what's significant is the fiberglass exterior of the Winnebago Minis are the same as what you get on a diesel pusher. So this is a Noble Classic T60 gel coat exterior over the fiberglass. So it's the kind of thing that you could buff out if it got a scratch. It maintains its color and its luster and things a lot better. And it's a uh, four times thicker than a, what is standardly used on a trailer. It is heavier, but it also adds strength and it's less prone to damage or, you know, sun damage where things fade or things like that. You're not gonna get that on these walls. So this is a superior gel coat wall on these units. The windows on the Winnebago are gonna be uh, sliders and they're just set in. So these are not the frameless windows that everyone is so thrilled with, but they're still great windows. And uh, I believe they are single pane but you can get them in double pane so let's go around take a look at the slide uh, in all my research i've been searching to find are the slide walls built exactly the same as the rest of the walls on the rig now i haven't got 100 percent certainty on that but they've led me to believe that they are they are on a schwintech system uh, which on smaller, lighter slides is perfectly fine. If the slide's getting bigger and heavier, then they should probably be moving to a different system. But for these uh, mini trailers, I think they're just fine. Um, we've got bulb seal and we've got flap. If we go up, you're going to see no actual awning topper. And I'm sure you can get those added if you want. I would get them at it. I've said that many times that I think awning toppers are important. You can also see the uh, sort of ease trough rail up there and the spout to move the water away from the trailer as it comes off the roof. So those are important, small, but important details. Let's go back and see what else. You've got your spare back here, which I like because it's easily accessible. And if you look up, you can see that it is, it's not there, but you could get a backup camera if you so choose to put one on. So obviously it's an option. So it is a fully walkable roof and you've got a ladder for that. And you can see that it has a curve to it. So that's going to help it to shed the water, right? And we mentioned it was a TPO roof up there. Let's come around. Ooh, it's tight here. Uh, you get a big awning. These are really big awnings. They will be electric and they should have, yeah, they do have LED lighting in them. So we all know I love that. And then last but not least, we need to talk about that floor structure. And we've talked about the chassis, we've talked about the underbelly and the tanks and things, but the actual floor structure is also uh, aluminum, two by three joists on 12 inch centers. Um, and then they also have aluminum struts running the length of the trailer. So there's quite a bit of support and that, that's put on top of the chassis. It's got a 5 8 tongue and groove plywood floor. That's an exterior grade. Um, and then it has fiberglass insulation again. 
and then it's down to that fully enclosed underbelly. Um, so I guess the other thing to point out is that the, the only part that is uh, a laminated pinch rolled would be the walls. Everything else is built with residential grade uh, fiberglass and therefore is not pinch rolled. So that wraps up the construction video on the Winnebago Mini Series. And like I said, they, uh, that goes with a number of different Winnebago trailers. And in one of the corners here, I'll put an actual uh, tour of a model. And I will point out the differences that you might see, whether it be a Mini Drop or a Mini Plus or the Micro Mini or those kinds of things. Uh, so hope that this has given you the information you need to help you understand the Winnebago construction a little better. So hit the like button, hit subscribe if you haven't already so that we can show you a whole bunch more and then click that link to a particular tour and we'll also throw an adventure up there because we're always out doing something fun. Come along with us. Thanks for watching.